In this example, we're asked to solve the rational equation. We're given 5 over x squared minus x minus 6 minus 1 over x minus 3 equals 2x over x plus 2. The very first thing we need to do is to get all denominators factored completely. And uh, we have a trinomial in the first denominator, which needs to probably be factored. So I'm going to try to factor the first denominator. We've got 5 over, and I'm thinking what times what would be x squared? That would be x times x. Now I'm thinking what times what would multiply to give us a 6 that would also add up to negative 1. And that could be a negative 3 and a positive 2. We would get a negative 6, and we would also have a positive 2x and a negative 3x, which adds up to negative x. So the first denominator is now factored as x minus 3 times x plus 2. The second denominator does not need to be factored. It's not factorable, so let's just copy the second term, minus 1 over x minus 3. And then the term on the right side of the equation, its denominator cannot be factored either. So we're just going to copy that down, 2x over x plus 2. All denominators are factored completely. The next thing to do is to write down any restricted values. Those are values of x that make any fraction undefined. So I'm just going to make a note here so I remember this later when we check our answers at the end, that x cannot equal, I'm noticing x can't equal 3, because 3 subtract 3 would be 0. That would make this first denominator a 0, as well as it would make this denominator 0. So x can't equal 3. And also, x can't equal another number, negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 would make this factor 0, which would 0 out the denominator there. And negative 2 would also 0 out this last denominator. So x can't equal 3, and x can't equal negative 2. If when we get done solving, we get either one of those values, we're going to conclude that that's not a solution, because x can't equal either one of those. Next thing to do is to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. The least common denominator is always the least common multiple of all of the denominators. So in it, we need to have x minus 3 and x plus 2. Those are the two factors that occur in these denominators. So we've got to multiply both sides of the equation here by x minus 3 times x plus 2. I'm just showing that I'm multiplying the left side by x minus 3 times x plus 2. And I'm multiplying the right side by x minus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. In order to accomplish this, we've got to use the distributive property and uh, multiply x minus 3 x plus 2 by all, both terms on the left side. So we've got x minus 3 times x plus 2. We're multiplying that by 5 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then minus, we need to multiply the LCD here by the second term on the left side. So minus x minus 3 times x plus 2 multiplied by 1 over x minus 3. And then on the right side, there's no distributing that needs to happen. So I can just reduce right now by uh, simplifying the factors of x plus 2 there, canceling those out, and it comes down to 2x times x minus 3 on the right side. We want to do the simplifying as well on the left side. So right here, x minus 3 times x plus 2 multiplied by this fraction. The x minus 3s can cancel, and the x plus 2s can also cancel. So this reduces to just a simple 5 here. 5 minus, right here we've got the x minus 3s canceling. So it's x plus 2 multiplied by 1 after the minus sign, which is just simply x plus 2. I'm going to keep the x plus 2 in parentheses. That's crucial because that minus sign there, that negative, needs to be distributed to both terms in the parentheses on the next step. And then on the right side, we've got a distribution that needs to occur here. The 2x need to, needs to be distributed through the parentheses. So that would make 2x squared and then minus 6x. Okay. So the fractions have been cleared from the equation which is what we needed to do. Anytime you're solving a rational equation, you want to make sure the fractions are cleared. You want to get rid of all the fractions. We've got a quadratic equation now. There's an x squared term. So we're going to eventually need to get it set equal to 0. In order to get there, it looks like we first got to distribute this negative sign uh, through the parentheses here to clear the parentheses. So it's 5 minus x minus 2 is equal to 2x squared minus 6x. There's a pair of like terms on the left side, the, the two constant terms. 5 minus 2 is 3. So we've got negative x plus 3, or 3 minus x, if you prefer, equals 2x squared 
minus 6x. Since it's a quadratic equation, degree 2, in other words, we've got to get it set equal to 0 and then try to solve it by factoring using the zero product rule. So we need to get all terms on the same side. It'll be best if we bring all terms to the right side since the x squared term is already on the right and its coefficient is a positive value. So I'm going to add x to both sides here. And we also want to subtract 3 from both sides to get all terms on the right side. This will give us 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. To finish solving then, we've got to try to factor the right side. So I'm going to create two sets of parentheses and think about how to factor the trinomial that's on the right. I'm thinking what times what multiplies to give me 2x squared, and that would be 2x times x. Now I'm thinking what times what is 3, and that has to be 3 and 1. So it could be a 3 and a 1 or 1 and a 3. To get the middle term of negative 5x, I'm going to try it like this with a 1 in the first factor and a 3 in the second factor. If we make it a negative 3 and a positive 1, that's going to give us a negative 6x and a positive 1x, which will correctly add up to negative 5x. And a positive 1 times a negative 3 is negative 3. Okay. So the trinomial factors as 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. By the zero product rule, once you have the equation set equal to 0 and you factor it, the next step is to set each factor equal to 0. So this means that 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. And we can solve each of these linear equations. Uh, subtract 1 from both sides. This will be 2x equals negative 1. And then divide both sides by 2 to get x equals negative 1 half. So one of our possible answers is negative 1 half. The other possible answer is x equals, if we add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. Okay, so they're possible answers because we have to check them by comparing them to our restricted values that we wrote down initially. X, could not, x cannot equal 3, and x cannot equal negative 2. Did we get either one of those values? Yes, we got 3. So because x can't equal 3, this answer right here is not allowed. This is not a solution. It's referred to as an extraneous solution, but we don't want to list it as part of the actual solution set. Negative 1 half is OK, because that value was, was not restricted. So the answer to this question, there's only one solution here, even though we got two possible solutions. There's only one solution that checks, and it's negative 1 half. x equals negative 1 half. Make sure to check your answers when you're solving a rational equation to make sure that they're valid and that they are permitted in the original equation.